Hey everybody, got another video here about the uh, Audi build. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can here, but in order to cram all the information here, it's going to be a little bit boring. Oh, that's some shit coffee. With Christmas and the holidays out of the way, I can probably get some work done on this thing. Um, I started off with a list just to try to condense everything and have an idea of where to start. So starting off with the manifolds at the top, the passenger side of the vehicle the exhaust manifold starts to hit the frame rail i can trim it because it's just a lip that comes down i can trim that and try to get it to fit but then the starter's there and it's just a lot more work that i want to do so if i can get the manifolds pointing forward and have a um, exhaust pipe go down under the crank pulley and come up to the driver's side and put a T4, T6, I'm not even sure yet, but put a turbo flange there. And for now, just have a downpipe bolted right to the turbo flange and send it right down the driver's side, maybe a three inch or three and a half inch pipe, uh, because uh, I'll try to put a little video here, but there's a lot of room there to put a pipe. And I think if I wrap it, it should be fine. And then when the day comes, I can just unbolt the, the downpipe off the turbo flange and throw whatever I want on there, given there's room. Uh, second thing on the list here, we've got the uh, decide on the ABS delete. I actually did some looking around on this and for our safety standards where we are here, uh, it is actually not required on a vehicle to be working under a certain amount of weight. So we're good on that. I can, don't have to worry about any uh, cops or anything like that pulling me over, giving me a hard time. Uh, mount the pedal, mount the tack module. I got to find an oil pan. I did get the engine to sit further back a little bit. so. Uh, a rear sump might work and will be better to work with the manifolds if I'm going to go right under the crank pulley So I want a rear sump. I'm going to have to cut and weld that subframe because right now The uh, main studs they actually just hit the uh, subframe cross member that comes down underneath the oil pan um, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with that if the oil pan only comes down about two inches I might just cut the subframe because it's a big square channel and reinforce it or just cut both ends off and put a tubular bar through there. We're just gonna see how much uh, room we have to work with on that. Uh, next is the accessories now. To keep it simple and to avoid fighting with belts and tensioner placements, idler pulleys and alignment, since I'm using an LS1 Corvette crank pulley, I'm just thinking of using a Corvette accessory drive. Just mount the alternator in the stock location with a stock bracket with the stock uh, power steering pump put it all there it's just bolt on and go so yeah it's going to cost a little bit more money to find the brackets the accessories on that like the alternate power steering pump but at the end of the day i'm not going to have any trouble with it and it's going to look half decent whereas if i make it it's probably going to look like crap i'm going to have to clean the harness up and trim it up get rid of any wires that i don't need run the harness make sure everything's good and then i want to put the battery the then I want to put the uh, GM computer where the Audi computer would sit, right in the little battery box there. If I can get it to fit in there and close that up and make it look nice, that would be ideal. I don't know where else I'd put that computer. So got to make a transmission cross member. I got a 4060 that's coming for it. Uh, it's from my father-in-law's van. He's got a shift kit and some goodies in there, although it's got a burnt up third. So I'm going to just throw a new set of clutches in there and just check it out, make sure nothing's underlying issue of why they burnt out but i'll run that for now one day i will go to a 4 uh 4l80 just for the sake of getting the car running and getting everything sorted out we're just going to go with the 4l60 just to make sure everything's good once we've got a good base then i'll start upgrading stuff uh, i have to pick up the starter and i return this fuel rail from the wrecking yard uh remove the strut bar yeah so that strut bar that's in there now the audi factory one i have to flip the intake around and have the throttle body coming out the back of the motor because if it comes out the front, it's actually gonna extend further than the crank pulley after I put a, a intake on it and that's gonna be in the way. So if I flip it around, I'll make the throttle body spit out the back and because I'm moving the battery to the back, which is another thing I have to do, I'll have room for an intake pipe there. So I'll have to remove that strut bar and because I've already removed part of any strut bracing that was there before, I'll have to remake that bar to go around the throttle body or put another tubular bar in its spot. Now for the U-joint, I don't really have a picture of this, but it's hard to explain. If you get the rear differential and it's like a CV joint that bolts to it, I think it's two, four, six bolts that go through. It's like a puck with holes in it. You bolt it on. What I want to do is I want to get a round piece of, I don't know, aluminum maybe, and machine it so it's like an identical copy of what the drive shaft would be, except no hole where the CV joint would go. 
And what I'll do is I'll get, uh, just load a little picture up here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm sure it's the same on other cars, but Ford just rings a bell. Get one of these. So what I'll do is I'll take that piece of aluminum and I'll take down the machine shop and get them to center it so that hopefully these bolts will fit within that per perimeter of the uh, factory Audi diff flange bolt holes, if you can understand what I'm saying, and bolt that right to it. Then we'll have that U-joint and be able to bolt right up to the factory diff. Now, that diff is open and it's probably not gonna hold anything, but uh, I did beat the crap out of it with a 300 horse uh, rear wheel drive setup I had before. Like I slammed the gears in that thing. Like I tried breaking it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't go. So hopefully this lasts a little bit until I can source something else for it. I'm gonna block off the oil cooler for now. We'll see how the temps uh, handle themselves. I'm sure it'll be fine for now so until I start putting some uh, decent power to it. Uh, run the heater hose, torque some bolts, don't forget that. And then the uh, brake reservoir. Uh, it's a standard car from the factory, so it's got a little nipple on the bottom and it feeds the master cylinder for the for the brake. So we have to get a automatic car one without that nipple or block it off. I'd rather just get the automatic one, slap it in, call it a day. So yeah, that's pretty much what I got for now. I'm sure there's a bunch more that I need to do, but that's the big brunt of it. So now I'll just continue where I left off, I think last week where I got the car lifted up and uh, got the garage cleaned out and got it able to work on. What I'm gonna do first is... So I'm gonna start with getting rid of all this junk. Crap. Putting garbage disposal in. Supposed to be putting LS's in. Subaru, get that out of here. Weed whack here, that can go with the Subaru. Just gonna jack it up. I got it underneath the diff, I hope. I can't really see under there, so I'm just gonna take a guess. Not off the ground yet. Keep going. Now I just could try to push it over into that wall so I can gain some room here. Okay, I'd say that's pretty close. At least I can stand in front of here now. I just gotta throw the rest of the junk out. Try and get it the high as it can go on the jack stand and we will start working on it again. It's been about three weeks since I looked at it. That is sick. That's freaking awesome, man. I forgot how well it looked in there. That's So after I've been looking at this thing initially, it it throws me off a little bit because because these two rails here are not parallel. So when you look at the engine in between the rails, it kind of almost looks like it's going towards the passenger side, which as you can see, boy, if you can't grab my light, that uh, bell housing for the starter there, there's no way there's gonna put any kind of exhaust. So then you come on this side, seems to be a whole bunch of room. Like you can put a three, four if you, Squeeze it in there. Yeah, so what I got now is I got a piece of string. I got it centered on the on the rear diff right now. And then I have it running down the middle of the timing cover here, center of the crank bolt, and it runs all the way down the back. So I'll go under there now, bring my light. Might need to get some bigger jack stands because it's kind of hard to get under here. So now we can see, as you can see, pretty much lines up with the center of the uh, output shaft there. Now, I don't think this is a perfect test, but I'm sure it will be fine. I don't know, it seems good enough for me. I mean, that's as straight as I'm gonna get it. So there's that. Hi. Hi, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, you gonna come help? Yeah, you got some chocolate on your face. No, your face. Chocolate on your face. Yeah. So first thing I'll start doing is I'll, I'll rip this ABS unit out. Uh, actually, you know what? First thing, I'll put this on here because Murphy's Law. So yeah, I'm going to rip this out of here. Uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing is you got your front brake lines here and then you got your two going to the rear 
right under here. I'm gonna take these lines out, make two new ones, have them come right down under here, and we'll have a little block splitter and send your brake pressure to the front, brake pressure to the rear. And it'll be nice because if you wanna put a line lock in here, it's easy to access, so. So yeah, I'm gonna start ripping this thing out now. So now that I got this bar out of the way, let's see how the uh, intake's gonna fit on there. I think that's it right there. So there it is. That's pretty much how it's gonna sit. I, mean, I can't see the exact, oh there it is right there, the holes. Make sure it's lined up and all the way back. Get the maximum amount of, amount of room here. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of room here, but it does clear. Well, it doesn't even clear on the bottom. We got a little bit of gap still there, but uh, I think we're just hitting those coolant hoses. I was just hitting the hose uh, clamp there. So worst case scenario, if I have to trim a little bit of this down again, it sucks, I already put it in there, but it is what it is. And then I guess I can get a pipe welded right on the throttle body while the elbow in here. My eventual plan is to have the bend come right off the throttle body, come out right through here, and I have all this space to work with. Put an air to water intercooler right there and then come through the top and since there's no throttle body here i can have that pipe come right over and go right into a turbo which would be sitting right here so i have this whole loop and hopefully have the space for it the only thing i'm worried about is that ls1 alternator again i know it sits off to the side here so i don't know how much that's going to interfere so um worst case again like i have to figure something out but that's the plan for now but yeah that's how it is that's how it sits i guess now we can check again I'll leave the light in here so we can see it, how much room we have. Close the hood. And it's gonna sit uh, right there. We've got probably two, three inches clear clearance there. So the highest point is that map sensor. And the further you go back, uh, the more room you got. So it's nice having all that extra clearance to work with. So I got the ECU here now, and I wanted to put it in this box, so. I don't think there's gonna be enough room in there. So we'll try it. Yeah, definitely not. Well, that sucks. Looking at this earlier. So after looking at this thing for a little bit, um, depending on how long the wiring harness is, I might be able just to feed it into the uh, car here. And down there is the clutch pedal since this thing's no longer standard transmission, if I take that pedal out, it looks like I might have some room. Put it in here, so I pull this carpet back. And there's that pedal there, and there's some room I might be able to tuck it up under there. That that might work if, uh, if the harness is long enough. Then I can just shove the harness right down that hole, ECU in the car, and then here, I can probably still put the tack module the throttle pedal so that'll probably sit in here fine and then run the output for the throttle body right there so as long as that wiring harness is long enough and i can have room for that to fit in the car that should be good and then the thing is i still need to put this cover on because it's uh it's got like sealant in there and it'll keep water and wind and shit from getting in so that's kind of where i'm at today i know there's not a lot going on but we're picking up and uh Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that wiring harness out and get that sorted out because I think that's gonna be some time to figure out what's going on with the harness. So I'll pick it back up on the weekend, run the harness inside the car and see how much uh, and see how much length we got on the connectors to run it in the car and see if we can mount that under the dash there. So we're gonna be picking up a little bit more on the build. Uh, this weekend I'll run the harness and put the ECU inside the car and see if that works out fine. Run the tack module and plug it in the throttle body. Make sure we're all good there so we can wipe the wiring harness off the list and then we'll start picking at something else 
and cleaning out this whole wiring, plumbing, washer fluid mess. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching and uh, see you later.